Hi there, um, I'm Ling, and today I'm trying to understand different types of constraint. So this is what I did for understanding the different constraint. So basically, what I knew for now, the the essential or the basic constraint have three types. One is glue, and one is the soft, and one is hard. So here I did some simple example to understand what the soft and uh, uh, those three constraint is. First of all, we need to fracture the object first. So after fracture, I just did a simple fracture. So I used the Barloy fracture to have some to fracture it to have some simple Barnoy fracture pieces. And then for the Barnoy fracture, there's a two output. One is a fracture geometry, which I can see from the explode view. And the second one will be the constraint. So that's what I'm going to study today. Even though there's a constraint, if I put a line here to see what the constraint looks like, basically the little line connected a point together and it becomes constraint to uh, hold the pieces. Um, then, but it doesn't know what the kind of a constraint is, so we uh, have to name the constraint manually. So here I use primitive wrangle to name the constraint. Basically, uh, it just uh, uh, the constraint is the constraint name or type is the uh, attribute. And uh, the attribute type is the string. Basically, here's S being the string. What uh, this is what the attribute type is. And uh, then I have to name the country name is. It's uh, here the first first example is glue. And uh, I define the type of country as well, which I use all, which can which include the all of the uh, translate and the rotation and scale. Um, but you can use other way to create the name attribute as well, which you can use the attribute create. And the attribute will be name, right? And the type will be the string. String. So the, the string name is the attribute names string, which is glue right here. I mean, the attribute is the constraint name. The name attribute here is the constraint name. So here we have the name. You can see from the geometry spreadsheet, we have a, uh, the constraint name, the name glue, or like constraint name. That will be saying constraint name and constraint name will be saying. Then we have the constraint name, which define the water type type of the constraints, and we can do simple simulation right now. Uh, I use a bully solver here, and the the bully solver first input required for geometry. Then just the a uh, fracture geometry here. The first uh, output come out with the uh, geometry. I just uh, connect with the first input. And here assemble, I just uh, pack the geometry. That's what the uh, fractures simulation normally do. And the second input, you can see is saying constraint geometry. So I connect what I created here, what I defined here, which is glue constraint. And the third will be proc proxy geometry. Proxy geometry basically is like the long detailed geometry. Uh, for example, uh, if we want to fracture some building or anything, um, inside of the inside of the pieces, like these faces, they might be have uh, some details like lois, 
when we fracture for the concre concrete, um, when it actually slow down the computer if you si simulate with all this detail. So basically, to really create the proxy geometry to only read, only read the uh, like right now this kind of uh, geometry without the in interior details and uh, to simulate that but keep the uh, detail information up from like input one at the end then it can have the simulation with the details but quicker that's why it requires a proxy geometry sometimes but here my example is simple and I don't have a, uh, any interior details so I just uh, connect the pro proxy geometry with the original geometry and uh, that's it then I can start to do the simulation here you can see it just simply fall down but actually we can tell the the constraint is there it's only because the constraint disappear that's what the uh, uh, glue constraint is because it will break it itself so in another way we can use I uh, use the, the top network itself and like I connect first input with the geometry so in the RBD packed object, I use the first context geometry, which is this one. And uh, we need the ridge bar solver. It's an engine for simulate. And uh, then other things, the basic like gravity, and I bring up a little ball outside. Just uh, input the soul path here, which is this one and then we can simulate that will be like that but with concrete we can see here even though the results look similar but if we turn on the guide geometry we can see the what the country looks like and uh, when we simulate it, you can see those red lines here. Let me actually put a wireframe like this. So you can see the bottom of the geometry, the constraint already disappeared. It's because it breaks itself. But it actually holds the geometry a little bit. Here, you can see if I bypass the country network here. That means that we don't have country right now. You can see there's nothing inside of the geometry. And we go 24 frame, or maybe like a 12 frame. It's uh, like this, or 18 frame, it's like this. But if we bring up the constraint here, let's go eight. You can see it's higher. It actually holds the geometry. We can see from the bullets, RBD bullets is over as well. It just disappear very quickly. And the RBD solver, bullet solver, we can bring up the strings. then it will disappear slower. But in the do by the doppler work, we can change the parameter inside of the glue constraint relationship. The strength is here. That's basically the same thing. Uh, but when we create the doppler work, it's not like the bullet solver, it make it automatically. We need to bring the the soul path, which is uh, just 
here what we create the glue constraint and the bring the data name the data name will have to be same even you need to care about the capital or lower alphabet so here you can save the glue and uh, even the uh, primitive geometry or uh, primitive levels the attribute is the uh, attribute is the uh, glue with the capital G then you can bring it here so the data name in the RBD pretty solver is here constraint and it basically the same thing how we bring it here I think that uh, basically what the glue constraint is and let's go for the hot constraints hot constraint is like what the uh, it limits it's hot constraint it doesn't break itself and uh, it's hard let's play with it the basic setup is just I it's the same as the glue constraint what is it I just connect and connect them and uh, create the constraint name name uh, as hard this uh, constraint is recognized by the uh, Houdini who didn't know what the hard constraint it is so the hard constraint the result is basically like this and uh, if we turn it to wireframe we can see the constraint bare meaning move right it's uh, more like the if uh, were turn on here we um toggle up the the hot constraint and it different from other constraints like here glue constraint it has a strength here but in for the hot constraint it only has a resonance it's big resonance basically it's like the um, the original initial lens of the constraints of the constraint, yeah. So it doesn't have strength, it just uh, stay there. Stay the, what the line is like, what, how, how long it should be. And uh, you only have to make, create your, the condition yourself to break the hard constraint. And uh, then let's go with the, uh, to see what the uh, constraint if uh, it hit by a ball, what the hard constraint is like. What well, I basically did the same thing. 